Hello everyone, this is Miss Lindsay. Today we're going to talk about section 5.4, proving that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. We are going to think about the properties of a parallelogram and using these properties, these properties will help us determine methods as to how to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. And first is based off of the definition of a parallelogram. Both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So if we can prove that AB is parallel to A, I'm sorry, BC is parallel to AD and AB is parallel to DC, we can prove the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. We can also prove that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. This would prove that the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Combining these two properties, if we prove one pair of opposite sides both congruent and parallel, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So for example, if I can prove AB is not only congruent to CD, but also parallel. So it's got to be the same pair of opposite sides, both congruent and parallel. The fourth one is if we can prove that diagonals bisect each other. So if we can prove that both pairs of diagonals bisect each other, then we are proving the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. And last but not least, if we pro prove both pairs opposite angles are congruent. So there's five different ways and these are really based off of the properties of a parallelogram to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So let's take a look at our first example. Using the given information, determine whether PQRS is a parallelogram. Go ahead and pause. Take a look at the five methods to prove a quadrilateral is a parallelogram and fill in these answers and we'll check them in just a moment. All of them are yes except for number two. On number two it says if PQ is congruent to SR and PS is con I'm sorry parallel to QR this is no it must be the same sides parallel and congruent and these are two opposite sides and again here are the answers yes no yes yes let's go ahead and apply these methods to our first proof first of all we have CD is parallel to AB. We also know that angle EDA is congruent to angle CBF. Okay, so let's take a look. Knowing that we have parallel lines using our transversals, if we look at transversal AD, we have that angle EDA would also be congruent to angle A. by if parallel lines then alternate interior angles are congruent. We also know EDA is congruent to angle CBF by our given information. Therefore we know angle A congruent to angle CBF by transitive property and that comes from steps two and three proving that angle A is congruent to angle CBF now if we look at CB and 
AD, we can prove that they are parallel by corresponding angles are congruent. So their corresponding angles are congruent, then lines are parallel. So we have shown two pairs of sides, CD, AB are parallel, as well as AD and CB. So therefore, AB, CD is a parallelogram. If both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, then it is a parallelogram. Moving on to our next proof. Here we have the larger figure ACDF is a parallelogram. We also know that angle AFB is congruent to angle ECD. So using the properties of a parallelogram, we can also say that angle A is congruent to angle D by if a parallelogram, then opposite sides, sorry, opposite angles are congruent. You can also say opposite sides are congruent Therefore, AF is congruent to CD with the parallelogram and opposite sides are congruent, which proves that we have triangle AFB is congruent to DCE by side angles. I'm sorry, angle side angle. So we must put our angle in there from our given. Then we can say that those triangles are congruent by angle side angle. Steps two, three, and four. Now that we have those congruent, we can go ahead and take a look at the inside figure that we're trying to prove to be a parallelogram, and we can show by CPCTC, EC, and FD, FB are congruent, so that gives us one pair of sides, opposite sides congruent. So we either need to get FE congruent to BC, or we need to show that FB and EC are going to be parallel. But if we take the fact that our larger figure is a parallelogram, we can get FD congruent to AC. By if the parallelogram in opposite sides are congruent. Then by proving our triangles congruent, we can also get that AB and ED are congruent. Go ahead and move this down. Again, that's by CPCTC. And by subtracting congruent segments, we can show that BC and FE are congruent, therefore showing both pairs of opposite sides congruent. Congruent segments are subtracted from congruent.
Again, so we showed both pairs opposite sides are congruent, therefore FBCE is a parallelogram. On our third proof, I'd like you to go ahead and do this one for class and come in with that prepared for class. We're going to go to our last example now and apply these exact same methods for a problem using algebraic methods. Dealing with QUAD, we know we have vertices 4, 0, and I'm not going to be completely specific with this, but if I have 4, 0, which is Q, 2, 3, somewhere in that first quadrant, which is U. A, which is negative 4, 2. Again, I'm just putting these in general on our coordinate plane. And our last point, negative 2, negative 1, which is D. If I draw that, will this form a parallelogram? So we have a couple different options we can do. We could prove both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. We could use the distance formula to do so. We could also show that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. And let's go ahead and do that method. To do that, we would need to do slopes of both pairs of opposite sides. So if I find the slope of UQ and AD, if they are the same, Therefore, they would be parallel. So we have 0 minus 3 over 4 minus 2. So we get that to be negative 3 halves. Now we'll do the slope of AD, which is negative 1 minus 2 over negative 2, subtracting a negative 4. So that would turn into an addition which would give us negative 3 over positive 2. These sides would be parallel. Now we have to repeat the process for the other two pairs of opposite sides, which would be AU and BQ. So find this, the slope of AU, so again, subtract your y's over your x's, so 3 minus 2 over 2 minus a negative 4, therefore we would add 1 over 6, and dq, so 0 minus a negative 1 over 4 minus a negative 2, therefore we would add in each of those as well. And we get 1 over 6, again, parallel. Now please write a statement as to why these, this figure, QUAD, is a parallelogram. So yes, QUAD is a parallelogram because both pairs of opposite sides are parallel and our work proves that and this concludes section 5.6 notes